All right, Dental Nachos crew, we got, our, we got our technical stuff going on. I'm so excited to be here. I want to tell you guys, um, I could talk with a special person that I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, one of the messages of Dental Nachos is to bring good ideas to dentists, bring good ideas to dentists. We have the opportunity for companies, people, whoever you are, to do a sponsored Facebook Live where we can share what they do, why they do it, uh, why you should consider doing it. Maybe you're going to do it now in your practice. Maybe you're going to do it later. Maybe you're a dental student who just wants to know what's available out there. So I'm going to welcome uh, Dr. Carl Kerner. Uh, before I welcome him, I want to say that uh, he is a legend and somebody that I admire for many reasons. But the first reason is not about extracting teeth. It's because 10 years ago, I was at the Greater New York Dental Meeting and they said, come to a lecture by and watch extractions being done in Utah while you're in New York. And Dr. Kerner's team were in Utah live streaming something I love, uh, a extraction experience to us in New York, which is just awesome. So welcome Dr. Carl, uh, welcome to Dental Nachos and thanks for being here. Hey, well, thanks for having me. That was actually at Ultra Dent in Utah. They had the studio, oh, cool. yeah, that was a- Well, you were, you were a pioneer, I mean, before we get into you, what made you even think, or, you know, and I think it's awesome uh, to live stream some stuff, you know, back in, I mean, this might even have been 15 years ago now that I'm thinking about it. Well, hey, it's always better to touch more people, right? You know, I, as I totally can. agree as a speaker, I've said, and that's why I'm excited here as a speaker, and I've done it for 15 years. I love going to lecture, but I would, you know, do a lecture for 30 people at a double tree. It would be a great day and then it's over it's gone right, and i said right. man we need to capture this stuff and i know he's from your uh era and i got a chance to work with my dad for 11 years until he passed away amazing dad amazing mentor and when i was in dental school he would pop in gordon christensen tapes yeah and we, we would watch them and i actually have to say to my audience here we uh don't have that you know all we had to do was walk into the library pull a vhs cassette yeah. off the tape put it into our VCR and watch it. And I would like to watch that tape today, Carl, but why can't I? Uh, no, no VCRs anymore. Yeah, he, he does streaming though, just, you know. Oh, awesome, glad, glad to know that. I mean, yeah. I want more yeah. of this, just like, uh, you know, I want more of it in the environment. So tell us a little bit about what you do, your dental, uh, your dental journey, what you do with dentists so all our nachos world can understand. Well, you know, I've loved oral surgery ever since I graduated, even though my surgery training in school was not very good. But, uh, you know, I went in the Army, and that's where I, I learned it. I actually learned it in, in three months, you know, as a rotation yeah. in, in a GPR. And that three months was good for a career, really. Um, and and I, as we talk, Carl, I like to kind of take, we have a dentist, you know, baby age dentist, bads, Medium age dentist like me, Madge. How many years have you been dentisting? It's in the it's in the low forties somewhere. Okay, so uh, you're a golden age dentist, the gag. Yeah, I guess uh, so. But the, what I'm trying to do though is is uh, have people around me that are your age or younger uh, have some of our instructors that are traveling around the country teaching a course once a month somewhere or introductory courses. Um, they're in their thirties and forties. They've had some experience. They're good teachers. Yeah. I, I love looking, that because yeah. I, I think that's what dentistry needs more of is different generations working together because sharing stuff from your generation, you know, us sharing parts. And it doesn't always even have to be clinical. It could be technology based because uh, my dad and his partner, I, you remember this, uh, in the year 2000, they thought that all the computers were going to shut down when it went to 1999. So yeah. it was called Y2K. So yeah. his patients would come in and say, are you ready for Y2K? And he said, we are ready in this office. We don't have to do anything. And the reason was there was no computers in the office. You know, they yes, were still yeah. using an old thing, which works. So I think that's just a great way to, to share between the generations. And that's what we like to do here at Dental Nachos. So you went through the Army, uh, learned about extractions. Tell us a little bit about your road after that. Well, you know, and so I would do what came up in the office uh, rather than referring it all which is not too hard to do if you just have a, a chance, you know, if you just have uh, an opportunity to learn some things. And then after seven or eight years, uh, I wanted a refresher and I couldn't find one. So I thought, well, you know, I, I'd been to an ortho course and I used that same ortho course format, just put surgery in there instead. And I've been doing it ever since. 
uh, maybe once, one to three times a month for all these years. And, and I think that's awesome. And as we dig into what you do in oral surgery, I just like to comment as a medium age dentist. So, you know, there was no Facebook groups when I got out. You know, I only talked to my friends in the area. I wouldn't have anyone else. Now we have this opportunity to connect, uh, you know, just instantly like we are now. But we still lack real education and opportunity to practice on patients after we got out of programs. And, I, you know, it's tough. I mean, I am get asked a lot of times, where can I take a good hands-on endo course? And I say, I'm not sure. And it's, it's such a challenge whether you're extracting teeth, doing endo. I do a lot with live surgery implant courses. And just, you know, as we'll talk about, there's so much time and energy that goes into setting these courses up in private practice. But I think it's just amazing that you saw, which was 30 plus years ago, the need for this. So tell us about your first uh, course you did after that. Well, one of my first courses was at an ADA meeting, and they said, uh, you know, we'd like you to teach for us, but we'd like it to be hands-on. And then they said, uh, why don't you do pig's jaws? And I thought, really? I need to do pig's jaws? And I got together with my lab guy that makes dentures for me, and together we came up with an idea for models that is very lifelike, and I've used the models ever since. The, it, I like that. Yeah, they're made of stone, but then they have epoxy... Uh, ivory teeth, you know, epoxy teeth in them, and then uh, a denture liner material that simulates gingiva, and they're very realistic as we teach our courses. And I want to tell us a quick story, Ariel. We're going to drop in uh, Dr. Kroner's website as to where you can take these courses, and you guys can ask questions about extractions for the GP. You can ask questions about his courses, but I wanted, you said something that struck me. So I had an opportunity to meet Lincoln Harris about seven months ago. If you don't know Lincoln, he's an amazing dentist in Australia. He runs right a 70,000 member Facebook group. And I believe he's a pilot too, or he has experienced this. And he said, when you go to learn how to fly, they put you in a plane. They don't give you any instructions. They put you in a simulated plane and they say, try to do it. And I just think that's an awesome experience because too often times in dental school, how we learn doesn't really help us when we get out of dental school. And I like that you guys have models because, you know, it's not going into a live patient because that could be overwhelming, but it's better than a, a book or just a PowerPoint. So I think those, that model, the models that you guys have developed is just a real asset. So uh, they do the model work. Now tell us a little bit more about the journey for learning how to do extractions. Well, so for example, this course coming up in Dallas in September will have the models. It'll, it'll have pig's jaws because you can do some soft tissue things on pig's jaws that are okay. So that's two days of hands-on, but we want them to do one day online before they get there oh. so they can hit the ground running. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll have some other things they can do like some self-learning things. And then we get to patient treatment. So patient treatment will be where I'm there, um, Dave Roberts, somebody else with our group is there, and they're uh, working with another dentist. Um, so they're assisting each other and working on patients with our stepping in to give them some needed instruction along the way if they need it. Kind of like in an advanced dental school setting. That's awesome. So first is online, which do they take that at their own pace or is it? Yes, on uh, their own pace. Right. And then they come to Dallas for two days, September 6th and 7th. I'll put that in there. We have a special offer from Dr. Kerner and his team that will drop in soon. So they come to Dallas for two days, and that's the model work. Model and pig's jaws, right. Models and pig jaws. And then tell me, when would that experience on the patients, that would be back in Utah? We are setting it up now in different places. Uh, New Jersey is, is one. We have uh, one that will be in Oregon as well. And those are the only two right now. We've decided to do it in the U.S. rather than going to the Caribbean, just because it's, uh, it's, it's a lot better, I think. A lot more predictable if you can do it in the U.S. I mean, I, I, would, I have some comments on that with implants, and I know a lot of dentists running some amazing courses outside of the U.S. and inside the U.S., but what I, will, what I can speak to really well is being a 41-year-old dad, Carl. And what's interesting is if you're a dental student, you might not have the be able to invest the money to go to a big course like that yet, but you have the time. When you're a 41 year old dad, you may have the additional money, but if you say, or mom, or mom, I'm going to Dominican Republic, your spouse might think you're just going to have fun even if you're not. So I, I think 
we do need more of this. We need as many opportunities for this as possible. And New Jersey, you're right near us, Carl, you can come have uh, nachos with us. <laughs> well, you know, we, we have one set up for in the Dominican as well. Uh, we've backed off a little with all that scare in the news. Yeah, I can see so, that. Um, but just, you know, I really get, as you see, and someone who I wear a lot of different hats with, running practices, seeing patients, teaching. You know, when I'm in my office working and running the office, there's just so much energy and time that it takes that when, you know, it's weekend time and other times, sometimes as much as you want to learn to do something, it's hard to shoehorn it in. So these opportunities, especially online, are great. Now let's talk about, Carl, for a minute, the why. So I always talk about explaining your why. So let's say we're talking to a dentist who just bought a practice. They're four years out of school, or GPR, they did an associateship. Uh, they said, I wanna do more oral surgery in my practice. Tell us why they would wanna do that, how that impacts their happiness, their production, their patients. Share, share a little bit of that with us. You know, they're, if, if they're a little apprehensive about, about extractions, they are so close. You know, with the things that we share with them, we can help them get those extractions in their comfort zone. A lot of times a simple work will turn into a surgical, but we have algorithms, we have step-by-step -step protocols that when this doesn't work, you do that. When that doesn't work, you do that. And nowadays we have the advantage of something that, that we didn't have before. And that is we can take what's called a skinny burr or a periotome burr, we can put it in the PDL, go around the root in the PDL and literally cut that tooth out. Yeah. Now, coronally, you got to be a little careful on the buccal and lingual, but, but if it breaks off lower, then that bone is thick now on the yeah. buccal and lingual, so you can still use it. You can go to the apex if you need to, just being careful of the mental frame and, and things like that. So then the instrument that we put in there is a, a luxator. So after the burr, I mean, the burr won't get it out. It, it yeah. makes it easier to get out, but then we put that skinny, skinny luxator in there and turn it one way and the other way and it loosens that root up. It's, they're just ways now that we didn't have before. A lot of times they don't teach those in dental school. We do, because we want people to do it better and faster. It, I love that, and you know, if, you're, if you're watching on Dental Nachos, feel free to drop a question in the comments. And I love everything you said about that, because I teach this course, My First Implant. And my goal in teaching is for dentists to learn how to place their first implant, even if they don't want to place implants. Come, place one, feel the experience, talk to your patients. You know, you don't have to decide to place 100. But what I do when I bring these dentists in, and I understand this, they're out of surgery practice, right? I mean, they haven't done much surgery. So I say, before you come to the course, do some extractions, suture some extraction sockets. So what you're really creating is the foundation for dentists to jump into doing more oral surgery in a responsible way. You know, that's so true. How can they really be good at implants and possible complications if they're, if they're not good at surgical extractions? I think they go hand in hand. One leads to the other. So and what I say, Carl, is, you know, I do a lot of patient communication lectures in our office. I do most of the treatment planning for implants. So the patient says to me, is the implant going to hurt? You know, they come after the extraction and the bone preservation. And they say, is the implant going to hurt? I said, it's easier than the removal. So I actually, what's interesting is placing a single tooth implant in the back is actually a skill that general dentists can be good at. You know, they line things up. It's like a giant post. The removal of the tooth is much more unpredictable. So a lot of times dentists will say, I don't know how I'm going to place implants. I say, well, are you doing extractions? And they say, oh, I do 30 extractions a month. Then I suture and I do surgery, a surgical. I say, you're going to be great. If someone says, I haven't done an extraction since dental school. I actually encourage them to take an extraction course first because that's stuff you can do daily or not weekly in your practice. Well, and another thing about extractions is, you know, you may get the tooth out, but you take the buckle plate with it. Right. That, that's just two steps backwards on the implant. So what we train people to do is to save that thin buckle plate and to graft it if it needs it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what you're, you're creating is great. So tell us, you know, uh, I have two small humans that live in my house. Uh, they're, I don't know what's the word for them, insane. They're insane people, but they're great. So if someone was about to have their second child, they might come to me and my wife and say, what's it like? And I say, buy a lot of wine, but you know. Um, tell us a little bit about some of your course grads 
and what they would say about the courses or how that's helped them in their practice or where they've got on from there. Someone who's maybe saying, I don't know if I want to ready to invest in a course like this. Tell us about some of your grads. Well, I mean, I don't have to tell them about that. They can go to our website, which is kernercenter.com. And on that site, from our last course in Dallas, which the, the response was overwhelming, we had most of the people there make a little video clip of what they felt about it. And so those are on our website under videos over on the left, and they can they can hear people actually awesome. talking about it. Put that in the notes. Kernercenter.com. Right. Under testimonials. Put that link in there for with right. the testimonials for him. Um, so we'll look at that there. Uh, if someone's saying, you know what, I can make this September sixth and seventh, I'll tell you guys now. Dr. Kerner is going to give us a awesome nacho code, nacho three hundred will save you $300 on the course, very generous. I like the name of the code too, thank you. So Arrow put Nacho 300 saves you off of the $2,700 investment, great value. Me, Carl, who always tells the why, you know, somebody spends $2,400 plus $1,000 expenses, they've invested $3,400, but what they learn, they can use to make money forever, they can use to be happier forever and use to help their patients forever. And I, I noticed this, Carl, and I admire you for your GAD time. But even me, who I did a multi-year GPR, and I went to so many courses, I will tell the nacho world, if you talk to a medium-age dentist or older, they will always say they wish they did more when they were young. They wish they went to more CE. And they know it's a cost, and they know it's the time. But it's more than just the, the clinical experience. It's meeting other dentists, meeting leaders in the industry. So that is just awesome. Uh, if people are coming to that course in September, anything they need to do to prepare, uh, what would they do over the next couple of months? Anything that they would need to do to prepare for that? Yeah, there, there is. So we also have that one day, eight hours um, online. So as, as they sign up for the course, before they come to the two day in Dallas, they will do that one day at home. We also have webinars every other Wednesday at night. It's at seven o'clock mountain time. But so there's webinars they can come to. There's also a forum we have where they can put in a case and put in pictures and have other people comment. It's just for surgery. It's not for everything. Yes. So we've got our webinars twice a month and then our forum, KCSI forum, uh, that they can join in any day of the week. And uh, I like that. I mean, I like that you deliver uh, multifaceted learning in ways that they can digest, get them ready. And, you know, you're someone who's been in the CE space for a long time. I have been uh, too. I want to just encourage people that, you know, pick one thing to focus on, right? You teach attractions. I might teach implants. We're doing a sleep apnea course. People are doing endo. You can't learn everything in one year. You know, knock off, invest, invest your energy and time in extractions. Do that. Then pick something else. It's overwhelming for young dentists sometimes, probably. They say, should I learn ortho endo implants this year? And I say, no, it's way, way too much, you know? Have you, have you, have you, would you agree with that? I do. But hey, are you telling me to go back to the Caribbean, back to the Dominican? Not yet, not yet. I, 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 I have to say, and you know, this is just speaker to speaker or, or course person to course person, you know, I get to go to these great places. Even sometimes they go, oh, you went to Arizona to speak for Mark Costas' event. Did you enjoy it? I said, I enjoyed the event, but I was just inside the hotel. So I encourage, you know, come to New Jersey near us and do extraction training, then go to the Aruba, Mexico and sit on the beach. Because there we go. I find Carl, like it's like when you're on a, a new, whether you're on a diet or a new eating program, you say, okay, I'm not gonna eat ice cream anymore. Imagine if you open up your fridge and there was a bunch of ice cream, it would be tempting. So I always, I've never been to one of those courses in uh, Mexico, but I would just imagine that part of you would rather be on the beach than, you know, doing extractions. But in New Jersey, you know, you'll, you'll have focus. Where is it in New Jersey? It's in Paramus. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with, uh, Ken, Ken Filer at the uh, Institute there. The, when, when is that one going to be? When's the dates for the New Jersey hands-on if you have them maybe they're on the website? Okay. It's on our website. I'd have to have them go to that. But sure. I'll be teaching in New Jersey actually next week, and uh, we're just going over the finer details of that, but they're welcome to come to that. Oh, nice. That's great. And where is that going to be in Paramus, same place? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. We'll put that on there. Well, I'm uh, thrilled to have spoken with you. I'm glad you got on here and did this with us. We'll share this, and 
I love any good ideas for dentists, knowing more about extractions. It's not about doing every extraction. It's not about doing no extractions. It's about refining what fits for you. As a GP, Carl, we still get to refer out what we don't sure. want or what's not responsible. Yeah. Any parting thoughts that you want to share with the nacho world on anything related to this, your journey, the courses, why do extractions? Well, it just brings me great satisfaction to have people come up to me at a course and say, I heard you a couple of years ago and I'm doing this or that. And, and, but we're improving it even every time, every time, every day, you know, every course we teach is a little better than the last one. So even though it's been good in the past, we think it's even better now, especially with the uh, different multimedia that we have access to. Yeah. I, I love that you're doing that. You know, uh, the extractions are just a part of this. They're never going away. Uh, I find, and I share a lot of things that happen in our practices and I'm lucky to practice in a dental office that's been around for 60 years. And I, the extractions that our periodontist has to do in our office are not decay into the nerve all the time. They're not bone loss. They are fractured roots from people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And I think we should cheer those teeth on. If you, if you want to use a nacho term in a lecture, Carl, feel free. Mm -hmm. So dentist, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, we tend to be a bit negative sometimes. You know, a patient comes in 72 years old, post and core number 29. It's been there for 30 years. Yeah. It has a bubble, needs to be removed. The dentist, you know, says, oh, it failed. I say, no, just time for that tooth to retire. So, you right. know. Teeth, teeth retire, and I find that that's why extractions in our practice are going up because people are living a long time with dentistry that's been around longer than I've been alive. And maybe, you know, this is just the end of the road for the tooth, but we are lucky to have implants and other good things replaceable. Well, we wish that dental schools were able to do a better job teaching surgery. We know some schools where a student isn't even able to use an elevator or a forcep, you know, it's too dangerous. So yeah. what we're trying to do is start at the beginning, wherever they need to be, whatever they need to learn, we're gonna hold them, hold their hand and take them through the steps, step by step to be able to take out eventually even the more difficult ones. Also, I love that. Uh, reach out to us if you have any questions, Dr. Nacho at dentalnachos.com or Ariel at dentalnachos.com. We have Carl's uh, website. Uh, his uh, administrative person can also share. But thanks for being on with us, Carl. You don't jump off, but Dental Nachos, we'll see you. Go back to your afternoon. Check that hygiene patient that's been waiting for you. Don't make your hygienist roll their eyes too many times. Ariel is a hygienist. So that's how I get checked for my hygiene patients, Carl. I roll. That's what happens. So uh, stay nice. on with me, Carl. But Dental Nachos, we'll see you guys later.